It's going to be tough. It's just going to be, it's going to work against you. So, focus on the solution, not the problem. Man, this right here, for me, is everything. Everything. I was always talking about how screwed up things were. This guy and that person, this company and this thing, and they called, and they, you know, I was pointing fingers left and right all the time. Because that's easy to do, because you don't take responsibility for anything that way. You can just go on and on and on, feeling miserable, pointing your fingers, and you're right like crazy, but, you know, in that room all by yourself, are you happy? You know, when you actually sit for 10 seconds and, and hang out with yourself? No. Right? So, you know, so when you hear the problem, when somebody starts talking about the problem, awesome, great. Okay, so how are we going to make that better? What are we going to do? You want to work together? Can I help you? What are the questions that you need to ask me so that we can make this problem go away, right? Oh, it's everything. So, if you have stress, typically when you go to bed at night, it's in your head, right? Anybody suffer from that, right? You're just lying there, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, and everything else, right? Anybody raise your hand if you ever had that stress at night and lack of sleep as a result of all these things in your head that you have to deal with, right? This is shocking. Put it on a piece of paper. Just, okay, just put it, on, write them down. Write them down, and there they are. So they're not so much in your head, and they're here. So when you get up the next day, you look at it, and you go, okay, what phone call do I have to make? What email do I have to write? What person do I have to talk to to make this better? Not be attached to the outcome, because they're not going to react the way you want them to, and they never do. The worst kind of advice to give is the kind that's never been asked for in the first place, because they will resent you. So you just ask for what you need. Ask for what you need. I need your help. What? The reason why you're all in this room, I'll tell you why you're all in this room. I was reading one of my 473 self-help books. <laughs> I had like one on mountain climbing and all the house, you know. That'd be a better dude. And uh, on this particular morning, uh, one of the lessons in the book was, go out of your way and do something really nice for somebody that you're in conflict with. Oh, crap. Really? Can I skip this one? And I was thinking, who am I in conflict with? I'm not, that, I'm, not, I'm not that much conflict with anybody. Every Saturday morning years ago, I used to play basketball with a bunch of lawyers. So it was half basketball, half arguing. And I, I love both, actually. And there's this one guy there, his name is Ben Vandebun. And uh, he's, the, he's the CEO of Guffy Ranker. You know Guffy Ranker? They do the Zit Cream and Tony Robbins. and They're okay. <laughs> they make some infomercials too. And uh, uh, Ben and I didn't get along. I mean, we didn't talk, especially if we were on opposing teams. You know, we, would all, we would never get into fisticuffs, but we would always scream and yell and argue and everything else. On this particular day, we were on the same team, and in between games, he's complaining about his weight. I gotta lose these 35 pounds, running up and down this basketball court, it's driving me crazy. And uh, so I'm sitting there all of a sudden, and it dawns on me, oh, Go out of your way and do something really nice in front of somebody you're constantly with. Oh, right. So, you know, he was the big CEO of this big company, and he, you know, he drove the fancy car and he had all this money and all the success and everything. And I was when I was still training. Like I was still. I mean, I had celebrity clients. I'd get up in the morning and I'd train Tom Petty, Billy Idol, Annie Lennox, and Bruce Springsteen. You know, that was like a or Stephen Stills, which was you know not a bad life. But you're getting up at five o'clock in the morning, finishing at ten o'clock at night. And you're still driving a beat up car in 60K in debt, right? So, so there's Ben complaining, and I'm about 10 feet away, so I, you know, I'm going to exaggerate this, but it felt like this. <laughs> Hi, Ben. I was just. I just I heard you talking. Really well. I'm a trainer, I don't know if you know. And uh, I, may, I can maybe help you. <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah, that sounds great. What? Really? Yeah, I mean, give me your number. Huh? He said, and he called me that afternoon. And the next, the next, uh, it was a Saturday afternoon. He said, when are you available? Do you have Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays available at 8 o'clock? And I had a client who had just quit, and I was looking to fill that space. So I started training this guy that I didn't like. So the first time he came over, it was just, how you doing, man? Really good. Good game last day. You know, oh, oh. Within a couple of weeks, we were, turned out we were a lot alike. <laughs> oh, right. So the people you hate are probably your best friends and you don't know. <laughs> so about a year later, he says, you know what? You know, 
working out with me and hanging out three days a week. He lost 35 pounds. And he says, I got this guy coming in from Philly. And you guys should hit it off. His name is Carl Dykler. I'm getting emotional. Right? <laughs> so you should meet him. He's a funny guy. He's a good guy. He's really creative. He's got some great ideas. He's going to work for us for a while. So I met Carl, and Carl started hanging out. We, got, we hit it off right out of the box. You know, he's just, just a wild man. He's just full of ideas, like he said. And for about a year and a half, we just hung out. He was working for Ben, doing infomercials for pantyhose that don't run, and LASIK eye <laughs> stuff, you know, like through the television. Just, just happened. <laughs> Look, you can see. I mean, it was just crap, you know. <laughs> and Carl said, one day, dude, you and I are going to do a, a fitness thing, you know. And so Ben got sick and tired of Carl saying, like, I don't want to do pantyhose that don't run infomercials anymore. <laughs> So rent the room space down the hall. So he said, hey, by the way, can you also give my old roommate from UCLA a job? Make him the president of the company. His name is Carl. Uh, his name is uh, John Congdon. He's, you know, he's a teacher, and he's got nothing to do. So <laughs> John went, oh, president, cool. Of what? What are we doing? Okay. <laughs> got a job. Wow, awesome. You know? And so it was sort of a learning experience for John uh, and others. And we did something called Great Body Guarantee. Anybody have that? Oh, we have that. Anybody? Yeah, we do. We do. Two people. <laughs> Two people. I still make a 1.0000.1 royalty rate on that. <laughs> you all bought it tomorrow, I think. We actually have. <laughs> I've never done so it. So we made that, and that thing did really well. And we, we sold it on short form infomercials at 3 o'clock in the morning in Poughkeepsie, New York, and Miami Beach, Florida. You know, this weird time slots. We maybe spent $5,000, which was a lot of money to, to buy media. Back in, back in those days because we didn't have any money. And we, made, we spent five and made 10. We spent 10, we made 20. We spent 20, we made 30. And all of a sudden, we had enough money to do this other thing called Power 90. And then we were not the small little company in a closet anymore. We were actually growing. We had 25 employees. And then, hello, now we spend anywhere from uh, 650000 to $1.4 million a week on media for P90X. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> We're on, P90X is on 100 hours a week. It's on three channels at once. It's a freak show. All because I, I don't know, I went out of my way and did something nice for somebody. So, and you know why? Because I got eight hours of sleep the night before. See how it all ties in? Tangent man. Next. Okay, part two. Uh... Restore, uh, sleep, a.k.a. healing, restores the powers of the body, mind, and spirit, improves the uh, immune function. If you're not sleeping, your body's breaking. It's breaking slowly. You can't see it from the outside. Sometimes in the skin, right? Skin's the biggest organ in the whole body. But if you're not getting sleep, your organs are taking a hit because they need to heal too after being awake all day long. Really important. Seven and a half hours of sleep, and I know it can't happen every night for the rest of your life, but oh my gosh, if you add a half an hour here and there, it's going to make it. And uh, anybody feel like when you, when you get sleep deprived, don't you feel like your brain, you just can't talk, you can't function, you just feel completely out of it at work, you, you get more frustrated and crazy and, and argumentative and all that kind of a thing. It's because of lack of sleep, and all you got to do is just close the door and lie down. <laughs> I mean, it's shocking how awesome it is, and you don't have to do anything. We don't do it. She goes, we're going, well, I got my figure tomorrow. I got a plan. Oh, anyway, Sally, I am uh, watching uh, reruns of American Idol. It's awesome. Jeez. Um, a well rested mind and body improves performance, increases energy, heals sore muscles and joints. A lot of people that have joint problems is probably because one of the reasons is it's supplementation, lack thereof, poor diet, and not enough rest. Um, Another thing, too, is desire and devotion. And when I, when I sleep regularly, man, I'm fired up about my workouts. When I don't, it's, I'm just such, I'm dragging butt. Right? And the combination of healthy food, and that's how you make for a better life. Um, stress destroys, sleep heals. It's all true. All right, next.